The intermediate flow sheet is an extension of the simple flow sheet. It builds on the simple flow sheet by adding valves to the feed and product lines and voids to the top and bottom of the bed. It is useful for simulating non-interactive adsorption systems. In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at the valve and tank void models and build the flow sheet. In order to create the intermediate flow sheet, we start from the simple flow sheet created in the simple flow sheet tutorial, and now we're going to add the extra blocks required. If we go back to the Add Sim Library, Gas Dynamic folder, we're going to need two gas valve models and two tank void models. Let's start by adding a gas valve model to the flow sheet. Since we want to use more than one model of the same, we can right mouse click the model in the library and drag it to the flow sheet. A menu comes up where we can select insert many and so we're going to insert the first valve and then pick a location to insert the product valve. We do the same for the gas tank When we're finished inserting the models in the flow sheet, we can right mouse click in an empty area of the flow sheet and stop the inserting. There are several icons available for each block and you can change which one you want to use to make your flow sheet look better. This only affects the flow sheet drawing, not the underlying equations. So if you select a block and right mouse click on it, you have an option to exchange the icon with the hotkey of Control K. And I now have an icon that's more suitable. You can also resize the icon. So the next step now is to reconnect these streams and add more streams. So first of all we want to select stream S7, right mouse click on it and select reconnect destination to reconnect the feed block to the valve. We want to do the same with the product. We can reconnect the source to the valve. Now we need to add the extra streams that are required by using the gas material connection stream. Again, here I can right mouse click on it and drag it to the first port, select insert many, and then connect it, and then keep on connecting. Now that I've made all the connections, my flow sheet looks a little bit messy. I can try and reorganize it a bit more by selecting the entire flow sheet and now go to the flow sheet menu and select align blocks to make them align a bit better. And you can also select reroute streams to try and make the streams look a little bit more straight. Sometimes it doesn't work completely but it certainly helps a lot. Now we need to modify the specifications in the flow sheet and configure the valves and the tank voids. Let's start with the feed. We want a pressure driven flow sheet so we're going to free the feed flow here and we're going to change the pressure to 3.0447 bar. Now that we free the feed flow we are going to fix the product pressure so we can have a pressure driven flow across. So the pressure is going to be fixed and we're going to give it a value of 3.0447. Now let's configure the feed valve. We're going to leave it as reversible flow setter and linear valve characteristic. And we're going to specify the flow rate. So give it an active specification of 3, as you can see here in the description, to specify the flow rate and give it a flow rate value of 5e minus 7. And that's all for the valve specification. Now let's configure the product valve. Again, I'm going to leave these as default and I am going to give it a, an active specification of 2, which is by CV, and give the CV a value of 100. So I don't need to make any changes here. Let's configure now the dead spaces. So if we open the configuration form, we're going to again leave the model type as reversible pressure setter, include compression term, and the heat effect assumption is going to be adiabatic. In the specify form, I'm going to leave the tank volume at its default value and in the presets and initials, I'm going to enter a composition of 1 for nitrogen and 0 
for oxygen, which is the same as I have initially in the bed. I'm going to leave the temperature at 298.15 K, and I'm going to change the pressure to 3.0449 bar. I can now click the Initialize button. This initializes the component holdups in that void. Now we can use the flow sheet option, check and initial, to make sure that we initialize the whole system for time zero. Now that the system is completely initialized, we can run the simulation. Let's start by opening the plots that we had predefined in the simple flow sheet, and we can now run the simulation. Okay. Again, as described in the simple flow sheet, I always suggest that you go back to time zero and you always save your simulation there.